All right, guys. Today, I'm going to answer some of the questions. The first 25 questions to the Ask Shoestring website. I'm doing it outdoors only because uh, I'm kind of get this. Uh, we're all new to this, so we are going to do it outdoors because of the lighting. We're right next to the siding and the main line. North Fork Southern. So, Jerry's not always going to send me the question. He takes them off the questions under the videos and sends them to me. It's easier for me to see. And I got 25 questions to answer for you guys. All right. Okay. Question number one. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, Rally Griffin of Michigan wants to know what causes the squealing sound that's heard in some of your videos. Now that squealing sound is called shelling, S-H-E-L-L-I-N-G, shelling. And what that's caused by is in mountainous territories where you have a lot of curves. Now, railroad axles on every car are designed to go straight. Straight on the track, they're designed to go. But when you're going around a curve like this, those axles are still wanting to go straight, so they go around the curve like this. So that flange, that lip of the wheel on the inner side of the wheel, on the inner side of the rail that keeps the train on the track, that flange is rubbing on the inner wall of that rail as it's going around a curve. So in actuality, those axles are actually trying to ride up over that rail to go straight, but there's too much weight pushing down on the car. So around a curve, those flanges actually squeal and squeal and squeal, and that echoes through that 3,000 or I'm sorry, it's a three ton, two to three ton axle. So you got like, what, four to 6,000 pound axle that's wanting to go straight around the curve. So those flanges of the wheels are rubbing on the inside. So you got steel on steel rubbing with and a tremendous amount of weight. All right, that explains that, I hope. Question number two. This is from Jill from New Hampshire. Other than being out on the rails or in the hospital, what did you do to keep busy and feel well while getting off of alcohol? You know, that's a really good question. Now, everyone's different when they quit alcohol. Most, I would say 90%, struggle. They have to go to meetings, A-A-N-A. -A -A. They have to really try hard. But with me, after having two esophageal varices where you nearly bleed to death through a ruptured artery in your esophagus, plus what's called cites, it's, that's where your liver excretes liquid into your body and your toes and feet and legs swell up with that excess fluid and your fingers swell up and your belly, your abdomen especially. The first time they drained my belly, that procedure is called amniocentesis. They take a long needle and stick it in below your belly button and immediately that fluid drains out because it's between your muscle tissue and your fatty skin tissue in your abdomen. And the first time they did paracentesis, they got four and a half liters of like a yellowish liquid off. Then about two months later, it, it did it again. They got about three liters off that second time. But after eight and a half years of being sober, it's never happened again. But I still have those esophageal varices. They will always be there for life. That's why when I chew food, especially meat, 
I can only swallow a chewed up bolus about big as a teaspoon. Otherwise, it'll lodge in my esophagus because of those arteries, esophageal arteries are so swollen that my esophagus is more narrow. So I have to really watch what I swallow and how thick it is. Uh, what I, I do, I'm glad I have little Ken that me and him can direct our attention on a birdhouse kit or a model or walk down to the lake and go fishing. I got one of those daisy spring loaded one pump action BB guns and I'll let him target practice. You know, he's got some little safety glasses he puts on and it's just, you know, 10 yards away I let him practice. Other than that, that BB gun's not strong enough to, you could shoot me in the butt one foot away from it and it would barely I mean you might it might sting for 10 seconds but it ain't gonna break the skin all right let's see question three shoestring Tom Ness uh, to S out of Jacksonville Florida wants to know where can he send you a care package to okay now, any care packages uh, can be sent to my P.O. Box, and that is P.O. Box 554 in Piney Flats, P-I-N-E-Y Flats, F-L-A-T-S, Tennessee, 37868. Now, it's only four or five miles to that P.O. Box to check my mail. But usually I get up there every 10 or 12 days, maybe two weeks to check my mail. Uh, it's kind of hard getting a ride up there. And since I can't see to drive, I got to call Uber if Larry or Lawrence or Gib, my friends, can't give me a ride. And it's kind of hard getting an Uber out there. All right. Question number four, James Taylor, University City, Texas, says, Hello, Shoestring. My question to you is, are you going to run for Hobo King again this year? Or are you going to Brit, Iowa again? Well, after going a year or two ago and losing to Shabazz, I kind of thought, you know, the thing is, is, the hobo convention in Brit, Iowa has been going on for well over 110 years, or just about 108, 110 years every, every August. And the town folk elect a hobo king and queen for that year. And how the election works is by the loudness of the applaud. And you have a two, up to two minute speech to explain yourself. But Baz, Baz man, a lot of you know Baz, Shabazz on uh, Facebook and YouTube and the hobo world. He's got a pretty nice get up. He's got one of them 10 gallon hats. It's got buttons all over it. He wears all kind of flare and railroad patches. And he, he just looked really decked out. And uh, he, Baz is really good with his words, which and a lot of times under stress, I am not. So I lost because of that. But as far as miles been ridden and uh, amount of rails, rails and time spent out here, easily I should have gotten king, but I don't really want to go into that because I'm, I'm not going again. I may go up there to see folks, but I'm not gonna run for hobo king again. All right, question number five. Dave from Northwest, or I'm sorry, Northern North Carolina asked, how do you know where the destination of the train is going? Well, a lot of people, well, that's a frequent question. A lot of people ask me, how do I know where the train's going? Well, when, in 1989, when I first started riding, I didn't care. So I hopped on any train that was going any direction and I rode that freight train until the end of the line, until they yarded it. And as soon as I got there, I got my water again, I got my food again, 
did a little day labor work if I needed money to get those items, wash clothes, take a shower. That evening I was back on another freight train going another direction. I, kept, I just kept doing this non-stop for, I would say seven or eight years it took me a continuously doing that before I finally learned all the rails and routes and crew changes and all the hobo jungles and hobo camps and wait spots uh, where the mission gave uh, free showers and a hot meal. So it took me seven or eight years of just getting on any train and going anywhere no matter where it went. And eventually over time that's going to be repeated and then after that happens after seven or eight years up in your noggin you start learning that and now after 33 years of doing it i got it down pat pat i don't have to have no crew change guide i've never had one i hope that answers that question all right question six angus from australia wants to know are there any hobo saying that you've heard or thought of yourself from your travels? Let's see. I mean, let me repeat that. Angus from Australia wants to know, are there any hobo sayings that you're, that you've heard or thought up? Oh, I see. Are there any hobo sayings that I've thought up myself as I'm traveling? No, the hobo code kind of prevents, well, I don't say prevents it, but back in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, if you look on Google, you can bring up uh, hobo symbols. Hobo symbols are different characters, almost like hieroglyphics work. You, you would carve into a wooden fence or the side of a tree near a camp. That way a hobo, when he got into a new town, would see that carving. And one carving picture might mean bad cop in town, get out. Or the other one might say three miles down freshwater pump. Or the other one would say would represent free doctor or free dentist in town. It was things like that. Now you can Google hobo symbols of the early 19th century and see a lot of these symbols. They're quite unique. All right, hope that answers that one too. All right, question seven. Travis Kincaid from San Diego, California wants to know what originally brought you to the tracks and what keeps you coming back? Well, that's a word called lust, and it also has a lot to do with being antisocial, and it especially has a lot to have to do with Asperger syndrome, which I was diagnosed with younger age. Now, I've gotten better with it, but Asperger's also leads to OCD and other problems, which I am glad I have OCD because I'm night, nice and tidy and clean all the time or I try to be, um, I, I just keep coming back because riding on them freight trains to most would be loud and aggravating and they would never want to do it again. How can you sleep with all that noise? But to me, it's like a medication for that, uh, that Asperger's. It lulls me in, into a calmness. It's almost like a drug, a medication made for Asperger's and autism to me it slows me down it actually helps me sleep i sleep better out here under the stars than i do at my home base that's that's what's really getting to me and probably making me physically sick a lot is not being to be out out here in the fresh air exercising all day long i used to carry a 110 pound backpack 25 30 pound bucket 10 12 miles a day every day 365 days a year times 32 33 years and you get in shape so that, i kind of hope that answers that question all right question seven 
Travis again to see you. Uh, wants to know what originally brought you to the track. Okay, I am sorry. That was a repeat. I thought that name, Ken Cage, sounded familiar. It's my eyesight. I'm having problems keeping up. Question number eight. Sam Corona from Rabbit Hash, Kentucky, wants to know, have I ever been riding a train when it derailed? Now, that's another really frequently and great, great question to ask. Yes, I have been in a handful of train derailments, but thank God, never ever the car I was riding on always up ahead 10 or 8 cars or behind 7 or 8 10 cars and it's always been at a slow rate of speed like 10 12 15 miles an hour thank god and let me tell you even at that speed it is the loudest most dusty phenomenon you could ever imagine when a train goes off the rails and hits them railroad ties and starts jumping in that railroad ballast is getting crushed and dust from that flying up in the air and at 10 12 miles an hour when a train derails the air hose that brake hose comes loose and the crew automatically knows they got a situation an emergency and they stop the train immediately and at going that speed it only would take 15 yards to stop the train all right let's go on to the second page of questions. All right, question number nine. Mark Eddy in Las Vegas, Nevada asks, is there any autograph merchandise we can buy from you? Yes, at uh, shoestringarmy.com. You can go to that website. And I have some cutting boards with laser tagged. Now, I also have some boards that I personally, they're white, oh, eight by 10 card, really thick cards that I have personally tagged each one that you can buy off the website. And everything's relatively, really, really cheap. I, I'm not sure of the price. Jerry, my uh, website maintainer, he makes all the merchandise and I tag it if need be and send it back. He does all the sales near Dayton, Ohio, so I really have no control over what goes out. He sends me ideas and I okay them or throw them out. So that's how that works. Yes, I do have some autograph uh, boards on there. And if you look hard enough, and I'll let Jerry know if they're not up to put them up. All right, question 10. Scott Wright from Hagerstown, Maryland uh, wants to know what age did you start riding the rail and what inspired you or drove you to do this? Well, I was almost 20 years old. I was still a teenager. Just got out of the military. I had my basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey. Then I took my AIT at Fort Rucker, Alabama. I was 67 Victor was my MOS. That was medium helicopter mechanic, repair mechanic. And after I got out of the military, I went hitchhiking for that first two weeks. I was on this internal quest to figure out what my drive was, where I could put this extra energy at. And when I caught my first train in Laramie, Wyoming in late 1989 and rode all the way to Stockton, California, I knew right then I knew that was my destiny and I had to do it, even be it short time. But it was so, train coming, it, the lure was so aggressive that I continued doing it for 32, 33 years. But then I got hit by the car and then lost my fingers, had to find a doctor and get a home base so I could take care of myself and live on. All right, John Myers of Lake George, Colorado wants to know which 
train to take and where it is going. And again, that leads back to that other question. You just get on and ride and ride and ride and finally you learn. Like out of Bristol, you go to Roanoke and then Hagerstown or whatever have you, Buffalo to Syracuse to uh, Albany. Uh, I could go on from city to city to city. Kind of loud next to that train. Charlene BB from Montana asked Shoestring, what was the diagnosis on your gut? where they put you on the antibiotic. Okay, that was like two weeks ago. That was a bacterial infection called H. pylori. You can Google that. But the antibiotic got rid of the H. pylori bacterium and I test negative. That's why I'm getting my health back. Question 14. Chris Welch out of Toronto, Canada wants to know if you ever passed through Toronto on the CP line. Well, after my third deportation out of Canada in 2007, I can't go back. But yes, back in the mid and late 1990s, I went through Ottawa, Toronto, Quebec City, all through Canada. Thunder Bay, Ontario, to Winnipeg, to Calgary, to Edmonton, all the way out to Vancouver, British Columbia. And that's where I've been all through Canada. Question 15. Catfish John out of San Diego. He asked me what my opinion on the younger generation riding trains. And it, what advice would I give a green horn to hop a freight train in today's world? is listen to your elders the ones who've been out here for years and years and years second advice bring plenty of water at least a gallon the other thing when the railroad police the bull catches you be very respectful that way you stay out of jail and maybe just get a ticket for trespass just be very respectful clean up your garbage and your trash at your camp all right G from Cedar Rapids Iowa says that you are very intelligent shoestring it wants to know were I ever an electrical engineer was I ever an electrical engineer in, in uh, my past well during high school I had enough credits to get me into this school called Arthur Stillwell Technical Center in Port Arthur, Texas in 1987 to 88 and that was studying basic electricity major appliance repair and hvac plus i kind of keep my mind open i can see different traits i do what einstein called mind experiments if i don't understand something 
I'll do I'll do it different scenarios in my mind until it logically makes sense. And I'm usually right about that. But the biggest thing out here on the rails is safety. Do not ever think you could possibly get hurt, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this anyway because my chances of not getting hurt are greater. Well, you keep those things going and over time, that's gonna work out negative for you. Just like when nuclear energy came out for the first time, they're like, oh, it's all safe. Nothing could ever happen. Well, look at Chernobyl, look at Fukushima in Japan after the tsunami. And look at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania. That stuff, even though it's rare, happens. Just like two jet engines failing on an airline at the same time. That doesn't happen often at all, but it does happen. What I'm getting at is don't take extra chances over a long period of time, because it will catch up with you and it will either get you severely hurt or killed like, for instance, when I didn't look both ways twice that morning, I got hit and had my whole arm smashed into 29 different separate pieces. So it took them like 17 pieces of hardware to rebuild my right elbow. And then four years prior to this current time, my eyesight's getting quite bad. And I misjudged the distance to get down off the train. And when I fell, I tried to push my way away from the rail to keep from getting hit. But I had my pinky and ring finger laying on top of the track and got them ran over. Plus part of my palm got run over also. That was my two main flaws. I thought real quick and thought, yeah, I could probably do this. You got to take that probably out of the equation and just know you can do it before you actually proceed. All right. Let's go on to the last page here. Now, these questions I'm going to try to do once or twice a week, but I'm going to do them at my home base in a makeshift studio. I'm trying to put together with some railroad stuff. That way I ain't got to get out in the ticks and do it. But if I'm ever out traveling like this, I'll, I'll do them outside and upload them. All right, question number 17. Carolyn Morrison from Cornwall, England is wondering if you have ever experienced any supernatural, anything supernatural, and if you believe in life after death. Now that's a controversial question and I don't normally like getting into you, but I will tell you my beliefs. I've never really had anything like out of body experience or anything truly supernatural, but I will tell you things that happen over and over and over coincidentally makes you think if there is something, a higher power. So after so many good coincidences has happened, you have to start questioning that. Life after death, that's another deep one and controversial, but I really haven't come to an answer, but what I truly believe, look at yourself in this present time. How did you get here? You were born on what date, what year? Okay, who chose that? And where were you born? Statistically, I should have been born somewhere like Bangladesh or India or the Philippines, somewhere with really high populations that would have raised my chance of being born somewhere. But I don't know, but I'm thinking, hopefully, I'm hoping that once you die, you're reborn again. Not, nothing to do with reincarnation, but just taking the spot of another creature that has morals since you're gone in your past life. Just like now, you're living now, where'd that come from? Maybe there was a time before, I don't want to quote you, because you, it's like a veal, every time we die, pulled over our, and everything's erased. 
So it's really complex question to answer in a really deep one and uh, it is spiritual. But that's kind of what my, I don't want to go in too deep, but that's kind of where I'm leaning towards my belief being. All right. Question number 18. Alex Laney from Mansfield, Ohio. Oh, he's just in Mansfield. Says, I just saw your video. I guess he's referring to the one that I uploaded from Mansfield or near it, near Willard. Was wondering if it was too late to meet up with you. Well, I already went to Alaska and back to Tennessee because I had several appointments. Actually, I had one yesterday, and that went really well. I got to meet the doctor and everything. But right as of right now, no, nah, there's. I mean, you're all the way up in Ohio, and it would take me three or four days to ride up there. And with me, every time I ride with somebody, there's really not enough room for two people to hide except for in a boxcar. But it is a consideration if I meet the person and I don't end up babysitting them. It's a possibility. All right. Question 19. Ryan Call from Redding, California says, Hey, Shoestring, why don't you ride intermodal? Oh, that's a good question. Well, riding intermodal, intermodal is what we refer to as IM. Those are those double stack containers, usually 48 to 52 foot, that you see, those box metal containers. Sometimes they're single, sometimes they're stacked. They're just box after box on each well car, they call them. And the railroad police watch those trains immensely a lot more than they do a scrap train like a junk train that I normally ride with boxcars and grainers and gondolas and tankers. Railroad police don't really fool with them unless you cause a problem and have a call in on you. He's got to do something about that to keep you safe. That's the bull's main objective with trespassers like us riders is to make sure we don't get hurt. And me, personally, I'm not out here trying to play a cat and mouse game with the police. It's just what I have to do physically to help my health. And it really does. When, when you guys see me out here on the rails, how much happier I am compared to being at the home base, it all makes sense. But that's why I ride, do not ride I am. Plus, it's too fast. They run up 60, 65, 70 miles an hour. I mean, who wants to see the countryside flying by that fast? I like to ride a junk train like a boxcar grainer. That way I get time enough to partially see the scenery with my eyesight. All right, let's see. Question 20. Mark, there is no question 20. It was someone sending you a song. I thought I better tell you why there is no question 20. Why there was no question 20. Okay, that's Jerry writing these down. He just said it was a question that was out of the question. I should have reread that before I even said question 20. So there is no question 20. All right, question 21. Steve from Buffalo says, Shoestring, you have provided us with so many hours of life-changing entertainment for such a long period of time. Do you have PayPal where we can donate to help you continue your adventures? Well, I, I, I do have a PayPal, but I really try to stay away from the donations unless it's an emergency. Because as of right now, off my YouTube ads, I make enough, just enough to pay my rent, pay my bills, and have a little extra. That way I can put back in case I have a really bad emergency, a medical emergency. But yeah, I have a, a, a PayPal. And if you want, I can place that PayPal link at 
the description of this video if that would help please you I'll go ahead and do that alrighty question 21 Steve G from Buffalo says okay I'm sorry I read it's my eyes question 22 Bob S from Lima New York asked have you ever heard of Johnny Cash version of the hobo song oh yes indeed that's one of my top favorite 10 hobo songs. And Johnny Cash is one of my ultimate classic favorite country singers. He is like a number one. He's like up there with Elvis. I mean, he you'd almost be scared to touch him or ask him a question. Yeah, I love old Johnny Cash. Question number 22. Uh, see, I did it again. That hour, I just asked that. Question 23, Uncle Willie in America says, hey shoestring, I wanted to ask you an interesting question. How do you take a number two while on a moving train? And that's a very frequently asked question. Where do I use the restroom, number one and two? Of course, he uses a different terminology, uh, D-U-M-P. I always take Walmart shopping bags in a big ball with me in my backpack. And if the train's going too fast, I just relieve myself on top of that bag, roll it up in the ball, put it in three or four bags, and dispose of it properly later. But if the train's going slow enough, and we're out in the middle of antelope territory and wind swept Wyoming, I'll just hang my my hind end out the boxcar door or the grainer and just you know go on the fly and fertilize as I go I'm trying to be as nice as I can verbally with these questions alright uh, question number 24 Brian Phelps from Rose Lawn, Indiana asked, where do you plan in, I'm sorry, where do you plan to be in this area of Indiana? Now, I frequent Avon right, probably my top number one place I, I, I frequent in Indiana. Now, Elkhart is the second most popular place that I hop trains out of. And South Bend, if I wanna ride up into Michigan, I catch it that split there in South Bend. That way I can go up to Flint, through Battle Creek, into Port Huron, and Detroit. Of course, you gotta split off in Flint in order to go to Detroit, or go on further and then catch north into Detroit. But I don't like Detroit. Detroit's got a big area called Livonia. It's a suburb south of Detroit that kind of the hood area you do not really want to hang around in but I also have something to tell that a lot of people don't really believe or want to believe I'm going to put my prescription glasses on they help slightly these are the ones that fella helped me get in Alaska Help me get the prescription, the eye test, and the and the glasses. Uh, what was that? I, I got to go back to see. I, I done I done forgot with that last one. Uh, ask happy in this area of Indiana. Yeah, like uh, riding up to Indiana on uh, what used to be the old Grand Trunk. You know, you go to some bad hood areas, some bad, bad areas. But, when the people in the hood see a hobo with their backpack, like me, for instance, with my bucket, I go sit down in front of a store in the hood where I'm the only white guy for 15 mile radius. I get treated very well. I get treated with respect. And the reason that being is because people in the hood see me as someone who's also struggling like people are in the hood. I'm trying to say this without 
making it controversial. But what we call it is getting a free ticket in the hood. Uh, the people in the hood overlook homeless people that are passing through. Because when somebody comes in or out of that store, they see me with my backpack and bucket and know I'm not there for just an accident. They know, they're smart enough to know that I come off that freight train. I'm just trying to get some water and food for my next ride. And I actually get help from people in the hood than I do, like say, my own Caucasian people or Spanish people or Indian people from India. I get more help from black people in the hood than I do my own kind and it's kind of hard to believe but people in the hood were raised struggling so they know when they see a hobo that that hobo's struggling and trying their very best so they overlook that they overlook someone being white Caucasian and I've even had them come up and give me a dollar or two and say, hey, go in and get, get you some bread or go in there and get you a beer or, or cigarettes or whatever because they have no idea what you're wanting to spend your money on. Uh, so that's how that works with what we call the free ticket in the hood. I thought there were 25 questions, but there were only 24, and I'm sorry about that. All right. I want to demonstrate this hand chainsaw. It's really nice. Give a shout out to the fellow that sent it to me. Now, under the comment, you can give yourself a shout out. I didn't want to mention your name just in case. I couldn't get a hold of you to ask you for permission to give you a shout out, but it's a real authentic chainsaw blade. It's kind of really hard to get unwrapped at first, but you want to get all the little twist out of it, which is quite hard because it's really sharp at first. All right, we're almost got it. All right, and there you have it. It's got two like seat belt handles on it, and one end and one on the other got to look at it close to find your grinding teeth, the teeth that need to go down on the wood, which would be those ones on the very bottom. See how uh, they're slightly more metallic, lighter color? That's your bottom grinding teeth. Each tooth is arranged in the opposite position. That way it can cut a complete path. Now, let me cut off the camera and get to a different spot. That way, I can demonstrate this cam uh, chainsaw. All right. We're going to take this little sapling. It looks dead already. It's just got some vines growing up it. So what I'm going to do is take this chainsaw blade and it works better on limbs that are horizontal but you wrap it around that trunk you try and keep that blade straight you just pull it back and forth well the tree's already fallen so let me start on a greener one Wrap it around. Not sure if that's showing up, but let's see if I can do it back on this one. I think that was out of camera shot. This is old hard wood. So it's going to take a little bit to get through, but green, green trees and limbs work faster. Uh, 
Oop. Not cracking right where I thought. Faster you do it, the quicker you are through it. Here's the end of it. Now let me give you a demonstration of just how much that cut through. Now if it were a green, see it 90% of that chainsaw blade cut, but just right there is where it broke and fell over. Now something green, man, them, them sawdust chips will be flying everywhere. And that's another good thing. You save them, if you're cutting a lot, save them sawdust chips up. That makes good kindling too. Help, but you got to make sure if you're cutting a green limb, you let them dry out about eight or ten hours to make sure all the moisture gets out. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with smoke and steam. So, that's the demonstration of the hand chainsaw. And I believe they're around $15, $18, maybe $20, depending on who you buy it from. But anyway, next, I want to show and give a shout out to George. George out of California. He sent me some funds. He knows how much I enjoy Nally brand chili, flavor of the Northwest. And I found it here at Kroger. There's jalapeno. I showed this in a couple of my last videos, but these are some new fresh cans. That one's got cheese in it. The other's got jalapeno. Now, you can buy thick, extra thick chili, not regular, and you can also buy my favorite, which I can never hardly find. It's called Walla Walla Onion, and it has long strips about that long of sliced diced onion inside the chili and let me tell you it's soft and you and it tastes flavorful just like onion it's not all cooked out of taste where it doesn't taste good uh and it's not slimy when you chew on it it's perfect that's why i like nally nally is the best chili you could ever eat and it never gets dull either. That's why I take it on every trip if I can. Now, Hormel, that's uh, chili that, it's all right, but you can't eat more than two cans. It's kind of like when you go, for instance, if you ever worked at Burger King, when you first go work there or you drive back by there on your way home from work or way to to work, and you smell them charbroil hamburgers, man, that smells good, doesn't it? But after about four or five days of smelling that, your whole shift, like Jim Carrey did, it gets pretty, pretty rough. But Hormel is a good chili. It's been around a long time. But Nally is the absolute best chili in the entire world in my opinion now i've tried that other generic brand that like kroger makes or food city makes uh food lion uh other places like now aldi aldi didn't even sell canned chili uh walmart depends on where you are if you'll find it now you go up to Oregon, Washington, Idaho, uh, Northern California, uh, like Western Montana, you're gonna find Nally chili everywhere because that's where it was founded up there in the Northwest. That's why on the can it used to say flavor of the Northwest, but I believe they took that off now for some reason. But anyway, let me stop the camera and then show you kind of where I am at for right now. 
All right, just as I finish some questions, here comes a, a northbound train. And he's going slow enough. I think he's stopping in the siding. And if it is, he is, I'm going to grab him. See if he blows his horn at me. Gave me a shout out. Sometimes they'll throw water off, so I gotta watch for that. I'll wait a while before I get up close and hold the camera up high. See if we see any hobos or riders that might be on this. And hopefully, if he does stop, we can find a ride. Well, it's almost impossible getting a ride on these tight. These are made for piggyback trailers, but they set containers on them instead. You can see where the wheels go of the trailer. Now we're back to the well card. Now nah, he's speeding up. He must have had a yellow light down on the other end at the overhead block down at uh, Mass and Gill Drive. That's where this siding goes back into one main line. See, there's piggyback there. More well cars. Now, he could have some automobile racks on the end. Yeah, that slope's a little too, too high to try to get up close. Because if I end up sliding, I'm going to fall to my left, and I do not want that. Yeah, a normal, a normal hobo will be poking his head out the side watching where he's going, so we may see one if there is a hobo riding. put them empties on the end then they'll fill them back up with some more yeah no way he's stopping now like about all he's got left is those empty well cars. Now them 48 containers that were passing by dropped down in there.
that's it for him. Yeah, it'd be kind of hard. I know that's IM. That's what you call an IM. Stands for intermodal. Because it, once they get to the destination, it's intermodal, meaning they unload them and put them on tractor trailer trailers and haul them different de directions. Like that one will likely be going to Jersey City, New Jersey. There's like a big IM port there, and they just send them containers all over that area and take them to port or a warehouse like if it's an Amazon trailer needed unload but yeah another thing I lucked out yesterday I went to my doctor's appointment and finally I had enough I said I need something for sleep something to help me get to sleep and stay asleep I said I've been struggling with this all my life but especially when i moved indoors into that home base i'm going nuts in there and i'm getting unhealthy but being indoors not outside it's working on me physically and emotionally but my doctor put me on a med that i've been on before in the late 90s when it came out called lunesta and i remember lunesta not really working for me is why i have always avoided it when it's been recommended since but i was at a state where i'm ready to try anything again and let me tell you boy last night i slept a good 10 almost 11 hours straight i didn't even get up to use the restroom and i'm physically feeling a lot better that's why i'm so chipper today and why i'm in so much good focus all right now let's go back to my bucket if we can find it yep there it is we gotta hop over this fence yep that's a bad thing at night if you ain't got a very good flashlight man you'll trip and hurt yourself yeah i had a fan send me a rechargeable flashlight when it runs out led flashlight when it runs out you just plug it into the wall and and it charges itself but no more than i had it a couple of months using it i set it down and it rolled through one of them holes in the bottom of a grainer and lost it forever that's another reason it goes back to when i say when you when you ride you carry two or three flashlights with it with with you on you thank god i had that because it was like 1 a.m when i realized that flashlight had fallen through that hole and would no longer be seen the the hole of doom we call it so i broke out my second flashlight and used it i still got both of them but that was a really nice led rechargeable flashlight i loved it it was waterproof you could focus the beam flood uh, straight on. Uh, so I'm going to look at them, Walmart.com and Amazon, see if I can't find another one. But uh, I keep tripping over all this stuff. Let me get out on the more flat terrain. I hope you guys are enjoying this new video pretty well. Well, I was walking down the track and I heard somebody say, Hey, Shoestring, is that you? And we have... Billy. Billy, and he's from, what? what's your YouTube channel? East Tennessee Railway. East Tennessee Railway. And you can look that up on YouTube. And I'm sure there's some really good videos. I think I got a good one today. I answered 25 questions off of my questionnaire from my YouTube comments. We're starting a new website. If you go to askshoestring.com, uh, Jerry's working on it now. He's going to upload these live videos of me answering people's questions. So that might go over pretty good. So if I miss any questions that you guys have asked, it's not out of judgment. It's, it's just randomly picked. So it's like winning the lottery if I answer your question on the uh, video. But anyway, 
We are walking around. We're going to check out some places, I guess.